And can you see my pointer? See the pointer? We no. need to see your face. Yes, you see the pointer? <laughs> okay, excellent. Very good. Thank you. Uh, so thank you very much to the organizers for the opportunity to give this talk. I really would have liked, to, in fact, I intended to be in person uh, in, in Trieste, but unfortunately, at the last minute, I was not able to travel. So this is work on uh, quantum, uh, a quantum theory of the treble electric effect in collaboration with uh, Professor Robert Alipsky, who is an expert on the theory of uh, open quantum systems. So this is an, uh, an exercise on the theory of open quantum systems, which I su suspect many of you will not be uh, very familiar with. So the, the calculations will be flashed very quickly. I'll try to emphasize sort of the conceptual points. Uh, and how is this different, for instance, this is very different from what Professor Marx discussed yesterday for, for reasons that I'll try to make clear. So uh, this is not a practical uh, tribal, uh, tribal generator for reasons that might be obvious to some of you, but it, it, it's the one that I'll consider because it's conceptually clean and you know, it'll allow us to do some analytical calculations. So here there's a material, uh, capital A, and there's a cylinder of that material rubbing against the hollow cylinder, capital B, and you know, if you choose the materials correctly, you can produce a, an, an EMF, an electromotive force that can drive a current to an external circuit. And this already is a little bit peculiar. Uh, so we learned in, in university the, the expression for the EMF uh, from the Faraday-Maxwell law. But even though there, there may be uh, uh, magnetic fields here caused by the current, there certainly is not a, a coherently time-varying uh, magnetic flux, uh, average magnetic flux through the circuit is drawn. But there is also another important point, which is that unlike, say, in a Faraday uh, inductor, if you reverse the motion of the cylinder, if you reverse the angular uh, velocity omega, you will, not, you will not reverse the EMF, evidently, right? The, the sign of the EMF depends on the choice of materials. So this already very strongly suggests that this is a, an irreversible process. Uh, the generation of EMF by the treble electric effect is an irreversible process, which is my main, my main point. So what is an EMF, an electromotive force? So this is a concept introduced by Volta a long time ago, and he originally uh, introduced it in order to describe whatever unknown mechanism was responsible for the uh, separation of opposite charges against their, their, their Coulombic attraction whatever separated and kept separated them. Um, my point is that what I would emphasize is that the EMF comes from an active non-conservative force. So it's a force that can do a positive amount of work over charges that have gone through a, a closed path. So it cannot be derived from any potential function, not from a mechanical potential, not from a thermodynamic potential. Uh, and this is analogous, I would say this is analogous to hydraulic pumping um, so hydro, you can say a pump can move water up against gravity, so it builds up a, 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 a gravitational potential, and you can measure the strength of the pumping in terms of how much potential, gravitational potential energy the, 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 the water gains, but, but that gravitational potential is not the pumping. Uh, and the point is that the generation of a BMF uh, is, 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 is an out of equilibrium process. Um, and in the context of tribal electricity, there's, a, there's an old school of thought originally in the Soviet Union uh, that emphasized this very strongly, uh, that, 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 that this kind of effects, tribal electric effects, uh, should be understood as, as out of equilibrium processes. Uh, and recently, this has been taken up, for instance, by just researchers at UCLA. Uh, so what, what will be our attempt to, to write a, a, a non-equilibrium theory of, of the tribal electric effect? So this is inspired by, uh, uh, so my, my own background is in, is in quantum field theory, uh, in high energy physics originally. Um, this is a, there's a story about Seldovich, a very famous um, Soviet uh, theoretical physicist. Uh, I got this from, from, from uh, Kip Thorne in a talk that he gave some time ago, that uh, Seldovich knew something at the time that you know, basically few other theoretical physicists knew, which is how a wind, the, the wind can raise a wave on the surface of the ocean. Uh, and I'll do, not only for historical reasons, but also because it allows me to sort of capture some of the conceptual points in a simple, in a very simple uh, picture. I'll do a, a, a sort of a, a toy derivation of this in, in, um, in, in, a, in a quantum theory, which is a little bit strange, but this is, this is what sort of which was, was originally thinking when he did his work in the 70s on what is now called um, 
in high near infrastructure super radiance. So imagine that, uh, so, so, so there, there's, there's a layer of air blowing with some velocity capital V uh, and a layer of water. Uh, so we can take it to be at rest, but you can, the, the air can excite a wave in the interface between, between the air and the water. And little v will be the capital, little v will be the phase velocity of the wave. So the angular velocity omega is little v times the wave number k. And whatever is happening in the interaction between the air and the water uh, must respect um, momentum conservation, which is just a consequence of the translational invariance of the system. And for simplicity, so here I'll take the, the kinetic energy of the wind to be the momentum of the wind squared divided by twice the total mass of the layer of air that is giving you the wind. And I can derive this use, um, calculate the time derivative of this using the, the chain rule, then I use the momentum conservation relation. And then a very funny, weird step is that I quantize the wave. So I say that the, the momentum that is being gained by the wave um, is, is equal to the momentum of a quantum of wave H, HK divided, uh, multiplied by the rate at which I'm making quantum of wave, which is F. So the rate at which the wave is gaining momentum is that same F to H bar omega, omega is VK. And then I see that uh, the condition that the wind be blowing faster than the phase velocity of the wave is equivalent to saying that while respecting momentum conservation, energy is coming out of the wind more quickly than, than it is going into the wave. Uh, so, and this is in fact, you know, there's a lot of confusion in the literature. This is in fact basically the correct condition for when the wind raises a wave, uh, a particular wavelength. So the, the, the wind speed has to be greater than the phase velocity of that of that of that wavelength. Uh, notice that this this would be that this inequality would mean that this is impossible as a conservative process. But of course, this is not a conservative process uh, because there is viscosity. In particular, it was very important. There is viscosity in the air. So in fact, this condition uh, that that the wind be losing energy faster than the wave is gaining while respecting momentum conservation means that there is. Uh, power available to heat the air. And by what some people would call the, the basic principle of uh, uh, irreversible processes or non-equilibrium thermodynamics, if a process can occur while respecting the relevant symmetries of conservation laws and producing entropy, then, then it will occur. Um, this is very similar. In fact, it's essentially the same as the, as the reasoning behind what some of you might have uh, heard of. Or the Landau criterion for the critical velocity of a superfluid. In fact, I think this is where Sandovich got the idea. It also can be translated into a uh, theory for the generation of sonic booms and other shockwaves in hydrodynamics, uh, Sharenko radiation, also electromagnetic non contact friction, which I won't have anything to say here, but it's a very interesting subject. And we, uh, some time ago, uh, the same authors, my collaborator, uh, Robert Lelitsky, and I uh, did an analysis of this from the point of view of, of, of open quantum systems. Um, but the story is that um, Sandovich used this argument. So he never says waves in his published papers, but I got this from Kip Turner. This is what he was thinking about to predict that, um, that a rotating black hole uh, should radiate. This was the first prediction that a black hole could radiate. And this later motivated the work of uh, Hawking that showed that a black hole had all the properties of a heat bath. But anyway, what is our key original result? So it's, it's known that you get this kind of phenomenon, which is in, in high energy physics is called super radiance. This is not the super radiance that is popular in, in, in quantum optics, which is a different phenomenon. But it only, it only applies to a boson, a, a, to a sonic field. Uh, and it's known that you, you cannot have super radiance of fermionic fields. But our main result is that if you have two different baths for fermions, in this case, there will be electrons. If you have two different baths and they're moving with respect to each other, uh, this kind of reasoning gives you uh, that there can be a, a, a a pumping of current from one bath to the other. So, okay, this I'll have to flash very quickly, but of course, if, if people are interested in the details, I'd be happy to discuss this. Uh, so uh, this is a calculation in the, in the formalism of open quantum systems. What is the system? The system will be the electrons on the surfaces. So going back to this minimal trouble electric generator that I considered before, there's a surface represented by a letter little a that's attached to the bulk material capital A, and there's a surface little b attached to the bulk material capital B. The electrons on the surfaces will be the system, and they'll be coupled to external baths of electrons in the bulks in capital A and capital B. 
So this is an exercise in, uh, in um, quantum field theory of uh, irreversible quantum field theory. So this is in second quantization. So I consider the, mo the, the, the modes, so this would be the Hamiltonians for the modes. Little x would be either little a or little b, so those are the surfaces, capital X is capital A or capital B, so those are the faults. Okay, so I, again, I, I'm just flashing this very quickly, but the, the point is that now there'll be motion. There'll be motion between one bath and the other bath because of the sliding. Uh, and this is introduced in this formalism. This has been done as for a cylinder because cylindrical symmetry makes, uh, makes it uh, much cleaner to treat this analytically. But at the end of the day, nothing really depends on, on, on this and can, can be easily translated to, to, to um, linear sliding between the materials. M is the magnetic quantum number and omega is the angular velocity. And the other thing, so, so this, the surfaces are coupled to the bath. So the other thing that's very important here, the coupling between um, surface and bath, and this G's represent some uh, tunneling ampl amplitude for electrons to, to tunnel from the surface to either one of the baths. Um, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not making any attempt to calculate these, that this would be difficult. This would require much more expertise in material science than, than, than what I have. But I, I, I want to say some concrete things that can be deduced from this description without having any detailed knowledge of, of this of, of these G's, of these couplings. All right, so we have electrons on both surfaces, we have electrons on both baths, and we have coupling by tunneling between baths and surfaces, that's what this says. And then we can write down kinetic equations for the population numbers of, of the electronic modes on the surfaces. Um, as usual in, in statistical mechanics, there are this KMS, Kubo, Martin, Schringer conditions that relate the pumping rate, which is, has the little up arrow, to the damping rate, which has a little da down arrow for, for, for uh, electron uh, coming from the bath or going into the bath. And the thing is, mathematically, if you want, the, the key point here is that this motion, the relative motion of the bath introduces a Doppler shift in the frequency that appears here. So normally in equilibrium, uh, the damping rate is always greater than the pumping rate, which is that this exponential is always less than one. But if this, if this M capital omega introduced by the motion is large enough, then that can change the sign of the argument of the exponent and make, make the pumping greater than the damping. And in, in, in statistical mechanics, this is called population inversion. It's also you know, behind, for instance, the operation of a laser. And the mu's that you see here are the electrochemical potential of the bulk materials, capital A and capital B. All right. And then we, we so this, uh, we can get currents of electrons moving from one bath to another bath uh, via the surfaces. And we'll but we'll assume that uh, the system re quickly reaches a steady state in which the populations, the population numbers of the surface states are not, are not varying in the right conditions. So the, the thing is, so you, you, we arrive at the conclusion that the, their motion induces currents in both directions. So there will be electrons that are moving from uh, A to B, but also electrons that are moving from B to A. And these are the expressions for those currents in terms of the pumping and damping rates. The net current flow between the two materials is of course the sum of those two currents. Uh, and uh, the, the sign whether there is, so if, if the two materials are, are equal, these two currents will be equal and they will cancel each other out. But if there's any small similarity between the materials, one current can, can predominate over the other current. And again, I don't have, time to explain this in detail, but it's very important that it turns out that this process is self-limiting, by which I mean that if one current predominates over the other, so that you have a net transfer of electrons, say from A to B, then the electrochemical potential of B, for the electrons in B is, is increasing, right? It's being charged up. Uh, and this, this charging up, so this change in the electrochemical potential, uh, discourages the current that is giving the charge, the charging and encourages the current that, is, that would give the discharging. So the process is self-limiting. It doesn't, it doesn't run away. Um, okay, so the sign of the net, the net current will depend on, this, uh, on, 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 on the relative magnitudes of, this, of these quantities. Uh, if you look at them, basically, this, the, the strength of these is correlated to how much each of the material holds onto its surface electrons. So this is, this is consistent with what has generally been, been seen experimentally, that there is, uh, at least roughly, there is a triboelectric series. It's not perfect, 
which was what Mark talked about last time, which I'll, I'll, I'll say more about that in a moment. But there's, there's more or less a triboelectric series that when you rub one material with the other, electrons will go to the material that has the, the usually the higher work function. This series is experimentally seen to be more or less correlated with work function, which is, has been seen in, in experiments also recently. Another very interesting thing that confused me a great deal as, a, as an undergraduate student, so you think of a, a, of a Van de Graaff generator. The Van de Graaff generator has the same contact on the bottom and on the top. They're metal brushes rubbing against, uh, against, um, against the, rubber, uh, the rubber belt. But electrons get off on the bottom and on on the top. So the current flows in opposite directions. And what is different is that uh, the voltage is different. So that shifts the, the electrochemical potentials. OK, so I'm running out of time. This is important because I think also Professor Marx emphasized this last time that uh, right, people used to think talk about just this triboelectric series, but we know that triboelectrification is not entirely a material process. We know, uh, and, and this is consistent with this description because I, I made no attempt to calculate this G's, this, 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 this couplings, but of course the, the, the surface of a solid is a very complicated landscape and the energy levels sort of vary in, in a complicated way over the landscape for the surface electrons. And there is an exponential dependence of the tunneling rates on those energy levels. So it makes sense that, that over the, uh, the, the landscape of roughness, uh, there'll be regions where current flows one way and regions where current flows the other way. So the travel electric series emerges only on the, on, the, on the average or this landscape. But also the point that uh, travel electrification also depends on, on the strain of the material. So of course, the strain will also affect the, 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 the surface electron levels. OK. so. I'm running out of time. Let me just say one, one thing that we can immediately get from this theory is that um, there's an there's a, there's a upper bound to how much uh, voltage you can build up with, um, with, uh, with this effect. Uh, and it depends only on the linear sliding velocities uh, written here Vs. So if I go back to my cylindrical system, I can write sliding velocity as the radius of the cylinder times the angular velocity omega. And this already is. is also interesting because it's so it's velocity dependent, which is something that the old Soviet school emphasized a great deal, and which is it's difficult, maybe impossible to accommodate in a in a theory of, of tribal electrification as a, as a as a reversible process. Time, time, um, time to close. Okay. All right. So uh, just this. So uh, if you put in the numbers, you get that uh, the maximum voltage that you'll be able to build up. Uh, just by pure sliding will be of order 10 to the minus 5 volts. But as everybody knows, once you've accumulated the charge, you can mechanically separate the, the layer and multiply the, 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 the voltage by however much you multiply the separation. And in the Van de Graaff generator, this goes from angstrom scale to meter scale. So you get 10 to the 5 volts, which is the right order of magnitude. And also something that's interesting and nice, which I think is non-trivial, if you look at these recent experiments, you see that the, the minimum and the maximum reported uh, uh, density of charge are approximately one minus the other, which you would expect in this theory. Okay, so uh, just let me close. The point is we're trying to describe travel electricity as an irreversible process. Um, and there are some predictions that, that this model can make even without any detailed modeling of the, of the surface electronic states. A more precise comparison to experiment, of course, would require more precise control over sliding and over the surface separation, which is something that, as far as I know, you, it's a little bit difficult to get an experiment uh, because, of course, it's a stick slip and, and things like that. But let me close, and if uh, people have questions, I'd be happy to take them. Thank you very much. Question? Here. In your expression for the current, you had uh, a parameter gamma, capital gamma. What was that on slide eight? Uh, it was just, okay, yes. This is, this gammas are just some, so this, you see this gammas, the reason, the first gammas have two, a, a lowercase letter and uppercase letter. Lowercase letter is which surface? The uppercase letter is which bulk? Um, and then there, there's, there's, so it's, it's a coupling of the, the, the surface electrons to the bulk electrons. The bulk electrons are considered as a bath, uh, which with a temp simple bath with a temperature and, a, and an electrochemical potential. Uh, there's a pumping rate, so the rate at which right, the bath would pump the, the surface states, and a damping rate, which is the rate at which the 
they would go into the bat, related to each other by a, by a KMS condition. And just for simplicity of notation here, the capital gamma is this, this, this sum. So it's the sum of pumping rate and damping rate for the coupling of surface A to bath A, plus the same thing, but for the coupling of surface A to bath B. And same thing with B, just a notational, notational issue. But it's all, it's all in terms of this damping and pumping rates for the coupling of the system to the baths. In your, in your theory, you are considering um, fer fermionic baths to couple with. Uh, in principle, there are also um, uh, vibrations, uh, phonons. Uh, uh, how about Absol them? Would they change? Absol absolutely. Uh, and in fact, the, the phonons are bosons. So the phonons already have the normal super radians that, that people have known, at least in the, in my, where I come from in quantum theory, people have known about for a long time. In fact, originally, this, the way that this project started, was that I was trying to convince my, my so I, I, I told my collaborator who's an expert on open systems about this Sildovich super radiance, and we we're trying to do some things with it. And the original idea was whether we could say something about ordinary friction in terms of, uh, of the super radiance of, of, of soft phonons. Uh, maybe not, not normal phonons, but you know, Rayleigh, just Ray, Rayleigh phonons and uh, porous surfaces and so on. Um, so that, that kind of, uh, when, when, my, when my collaborator realized that we could do something with uh, uh, electrons that had not been, so even the idea that, that, that you could get this uh, analog of super radiance with electrons as long as you had two baths and that this could have something to do with triple electricity came up, we kind of uh, let, let that by the way said, but this will definitely be there. And in fact, I, I suspect that there's, 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 there might be things to do in, 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 in the Microphysics to drive friction from that, from from the production of of, of soft uh, of soft phonons. I maybe this opportunity. Let me just say something very quickly. Uh, the, this process, so this current, this opposing currents, they always uh, dissipate kinetic energy. They always are producing heat, even if there is no significant net charging. So this also could have could have something to do. It could be a contribution to pure drive friction. Just something also. That, okay, that, uh, we're running a little short of time. Uh, I have okay. uh, what, what, just one doubt about your uh, initial uh, Zeldovich story. I, I thought the mm -hmm. dispersion of water waves was not uh, linear, like like you drew it. Uh, it right, uh, absolutely. So, but but here in this argument, this was not this was not assumed in any case. So this v is not constant. This v will depend on the k. And in fact, in the in the case of waves, <laughs> I, I, I've looked into this uh, a little bit. It makes sense because the dispersion relation for surface gravity waves, as, as people call them, um, is that the, the velocity little v is an increasing function of uh, wavelength. It's a decreasing function of k. So it, it takes a greater wind speed to raise a wave with a longer wavelength, uh, which is, of course, what you see, right? Uh, so small winds uh, raise short wavelengths and you need, you need stronger winds to raise stronger wavelengths. But yes, so this, this is not, the, the, you should not read this as a constant. This, this can be any, uh, a function of K, which is, it definitely is in the case of waves. Thank you very much. I think we'll now uh, thank Alejandro Jenkins very much.